So since you're known for your sidearm, we wanted to just walk through sure. a little teaching for sidearm. Yeah, for I'm ready. Um, would you want to walk us through maybe just the sidearm form? Yeah, let's start with the grip, right? Like, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get in there close for you, but yeah, if my grip looks like this for the forehand, can you get a look at that? Yep. So two fingers stacked. These two fingers are just sort of supporting the rim, and the thumb is pretty much flat on top. One disclaimer about grip that I'll say with putting, backhand, forehand, anything. This is my hand. It's most likely shaped differently than your hand. This is my Sexton Firebird. It's definitely shaped exactly like your Sexton Firebird. So we've got a, a little bit of a problem with the interface. Make sure that just because I do it one way doesn't mean that's the perfect way. Try it, sure. If you feel like you need a different a change with your forehand grip, feel free to try it. But maybe you have a lot smaller, a lot bigger hands. Maybe the grip won't work perfect. The key things of forehand grip for me, two fingers on the rim and no space here. So don't let there be space here. Go all the way in and get two fingers engaged. Those are the key things. However you do that, just comfort above all else once you have those things. So that's my grip. As far as footwork, um, wh where am I in frame here? Can I just kind of go out this way? Yep, just a little further out. Okay, so for me, uh, as you guys probably all know, I use the world famous Sexton Hop. I use it uh, with all my forehands. And how I do it is, uh, at its simplest, it's a left foot step, then a right foot, and then hop onto the right again, and then go. So I could kind of do it going towards the camera. Maybe that'll be better. So if I was going to throw kind of a middle distance forehand, it's going to be left, right, right, go. And it's kind of like, uh, I think they call it a crow hop in baseball. Say you're out by the warning track, you're outfielder, you got the ball, you need to get it all the way back to home plate or something. A lot of times those guys will do that move where they do a double right to generate some momentum. The basic idea is that you're turning your hips sideways to your target temporarily while you load the shot and then you got to snap your hips out of it and come through back to square to get big power. So yeah, sexton hop. You can do a lot of things. Oh, I see a lot of my, a lot of people do like a cross step back here. Again, not, not really super important exactly how you do it. Just make sure that you're getting the hips sideways, loading, and then being able to snap back and get some power. What about reach back? So reach back is a little bit different. Uh, Something to keep in mind with the forehand versus the backhand. The backhand is thrown with a passive wrist, a locked wrist. The forehand is active wrist throw, totally different. Another thing about the forehand is you can't do a long straight reach back. You hear that all the time about backhand. That doesn't work for forehand. You can't put your arm back here and expect to get any power. So the forehand reach back is not linear. You're coming off your line up here to get a big reach back. So I'm gonna be back like this. My elbow is going to be far from my body. You're going to hear people say to keep the elbow locked into the body. That is good advice, but not during the reach back or the follow through. During the reach back, you got to come off. Then I'm way up here. When I want to get into the hit of the throw, I am going to pin, pin the elbow to the side at any moment that it can be pinned when I'm throwing hyzer or flat. Going to bring it in close, snap the hip, snap the wrist and get forward through. And then on the follow through again, obviously the elbow is coming off. So reach back specifically up high and behind to where you can really swing in and use that power that you're getting from that from your arm and your lower body. Awesome. And do you do what adjustments do you make to control the angle? Angle can be adjusted in a couple of ways. You have a lever with your wrist to drop a little bit. You have your elbow. So on a hyzer, I'm gonna swing below my own elbow. On an anhyzer, I might have to take my elbow off the body and swing above the elbow. And then the other place you can drop is with the hip. So you kind of have three levers, wrist, elbow, hip, to make more hyzer happen. Same idea with Annie. You can go wrist up, you can go elbow up. You, can't, you don't really do much of hip the other way, but that's how you control angle with, those, with the combination of those levers. Okay. I know some people will experience pain or injury with a sidearm throw. Is there something you do to stretch or warm up or prevent that? Um, nothing different than I do with the backhand. Uh, it's important to warm up slow, to not try to rip your farthest forehand right on the first throw. I feel like forehand is even more jarring than backhand in that way because it's not maybe quite as full body. It's a little bit more of an explosive throw in the arm. So I find many power forehands will make me sore more than many power backhands will because you can rely on your lower body a little bit more in the backhand, I believe. 
So I would say just warming up slow, making sure that you're working on wrist speed as the, as the paramount thing where you're not trying to just arm the disc and throw super overstable stuff and you get that wobbler that goes out left and then comes back. Work on wrist speed so you can kind of work smarter, not harder, and you can throw a little bit flippier stuff and still have control. Okay, so what would you say for people getting into beginning sidearm? throw more understand? Absolutely. The, the forehand, while they are different in the fact that they're passive and active wrist, same tip applies. Throwing understable, hugely important because that actually lets you control angles. And that doesn't mean that if I get in a headwind, I'm going to throw a sidewinder just because I can. In a tournament, I'm going to go to my Firebird because it's even more consistent. But when I'm practicing, you got to be able to work some angles with the flippy stuff and you'll be thankful for it when you get on a really tight woods course or you have a big tailwind or you need to, and you need to generate power across some different more subtle lines that aren't just a wide open field hyzer. Awesome. Do you have any last tips for just beginner sidearm? Anything? Um, let's see. I would say, the, the, uh, just to reiterate, the wrist speed is so important. So if you're trying to get your forehand going, the main thing that people do wrong is roll the wrist through on the follow through as if they were throwing a football, baseball, whatever it is, fingers pointing down in the follow through. With the forehand hyzer, you gotta swing below your elbow, down here past your leg, and you need to keep the palm up as long as possible. Very late in the follow through, sure, your hand will roll over, but it has to be, you have to endeavor to keep it up as long as possible to ensure that the disc is long gone before that rotation begins. Because if you start doing this, the last thing you impart on the disc is anhyzer. You start getting that wobbly shot that's gonna move left and go out of bounds when you don't need it to, the other thing I, that I don't like about that is if you're a mainly flex ante forehand thrower, most likely your backhand might be your number one shot. So what do you really need a forehand that goes straight for? You already have your backhand. The forehand you really need to learn is the hyzer because then you have consistent right moving, right skipping shots. And that's what's gonna save you three strokes around next month, not a straight flying forehand when you already throw a backhand. If you're a, if you're a backhand dominant player today, you probably always will be. So you need to work on a forehand that gives you something new rather than chopping over the top all the time. So I would say focus on wrist speed, throw under stable, make sure you can have that control to finish palm up and get the disc to work the way that it wants to work, to fly out flat, get some glide, and then finish. Awesome. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you.